Hey, very good Monday morning to you and welcome to KRQE News this morning. I'm Matt Morrow. And I'm Krista Gutierrez and for Elizabeth Alvarez this week. Today is Monday, April 14th. All of the day's top stories in just a few moments. But first, you heard the winds last night. Now let's find out if they're going to kick around today too. And let's talk about some winter-like weather. Here's meteorologist Cassandra Kermy with more. Good morning, Cassandra. Good, good morning, Matt. Good morning, Crystal. It is going to be another windy day. And we are tracking kind of a late season winter storm moving through parts of New Mexico. And that's bringing us some snow showers, even some lower elevation rain. You can see here as we take you down into the northern mountains up near Taos. House. And even Las Vegas, we have some of the scattered snow into Santa Rosa. This is along I 40, some snow as well. And north of Roswell, a small batch of some passing snow showers. But the outlook for today really, this moisture is going to be kind of favoring the morning half or the first half of the day. Then windy and cold through the afternoon with temperatures today peaking in only the 40s and 50s. I'm going to have more though on how long this cool snap will last coming up. Crystal? First day of spring break for students of Albuquerque Public Schools, and it turns out kids at Zia Elementary could have ended up with this Monday off anyway. And that's because their school caught fire last night in the middle of a major windstorm. We sent our News 13 Samantha McDonald out to the school near Lomas and Jefferson. She has more. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Matt. It was a battle of the elements at this Al Al Albuquerque Elementary School. Heavy winds gave firefighters a tough time. It was about 5.30 p.m. The sun was still up. Witnesses spotted heavy smoke and then flames pouring out of the north side of the school. That's where the cafeteria is located. Firefighters contained it to the roof and managed to do it pretty quickly, especially considering they are dealing with some very strong wind gusts, strong enough to blow some smaller ladders over, according to one witness. And firefighters say this could have been a whole lot worse. They uh, immediately put the flames out which is pretty tough right now. If you can see all these high winds that we have, um, the fact that they were able to knock that fire down, it's pretty amazing. No word just yet on the cause. Firefighters tell us damage is minimal aside from the room, but the cafeteria will be out of commission for the immediate future, which doesn't present an immediate problem. Many people in the neighborhood told us they saw a couple of kids on the roof earlier in the day. The fire department says they will be investigating that. Back to you. All right, thanks for the update this morning, Sam. As we mentioned, spring break for APS begins today, so kids won't be back at Zia Elementary or any other school until April 21st. Now, this morning, we're still waiting to find out more about a two-year-old found unresponsive at this home near Sage and Unser in southwest Albuquerque. A toddler was rushed to the hospital, and we know the Crimes Against Children Unit and Children, Youth, and Families Department are now investigating. The time is now 5.03 on your Monday morning. The state is cracking down on state-funded organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters to make them more accountable for money and the safety of children. They're coming to the public for funding, and so we've got to be accountable to the public for how those funds are spent. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central New Mexico is in line for $720,000 of state money this year to help pair adults with children for one-on-one -on -one mentoring. New requirements to get the money mean volunteers must report how many times, how many hours, and where they're meeting with the kids they're mentoring. Now that's something the Big Brothers CEO says will cost tens of thousands of dollars to track. That's on top of the six-month lag it's taken to state to come up with this new contract and left the organization without the much-needed state funding. Another new safety requirement, making sure mentors are only meeting in public places. Volunteers already undergo thorough screening interviews and layered background checks. The Catholic Diocese of Gallup expects as many as 100 people to file a sex abuse claims against it. Federal judge has ordered all these claims to be filed before August 11th of this year or people could possibly forfeit their right to sue the diocese. This is all part of the diocese uh, bankruptcy proceedings. The diocese, which claims it's one of the poorest in the whole country, has been hit especially hard by sex abuse claims already. The diocese filed for bankruptcy in September, saying it would be the best way for people abused by priests to be compensated fairly. But the Survivors Network says this idea is a burden when it should be about helping. And it's hard enough for a victim to come forward and acknowledge their abuse and heal through it and demand accountability. But to give someone a three month deadline to come forward, otherwise they lose all their rights, is, is horrible and it's devastating to many victims. The church says most of the lawsuits and claims stem from incidents that happened more than 40 years ago. Well, parents and students who won high school in Albuquerque are now pointing the finger at another team they say is responsible for vandalizing their baseball field. 
Take a look. The boys baseball field at Valley High is missing the home plate and the word Jag is spray painted on the dugout. The prime suspects, well, are the Jaguars, the Etrusco Heritage team that lost to Valley last week. Albuquerque school police are investigating and nobody from the district is talking about this right now. Albuquerque police have a definite suspect in mind. They think swiped that pricey diamond from the New Mexico Natural History Museum. The raw three carat rock is worth about 20 grand. It was lifted from a display case Wednesday morning. Cops ID the guy in these surveillance pictures is John Murphy of Bernalillo. Now they say Murphy went to pawn and mineral shops around the city claiming he inherited the stone. Southwestern Minerals bought it for about 400 bucks, then quickly canceled the check and called police. Now there's now an arrest warrant for Murphy. Roof repairs now underway at UNM Hospital following this weekend's removal of the wreckage from last week's helicopter crash. A 120 ton crane lifted the wreckage from the roof Saturday, which was damaged when the medical helicopter crashed upon takeoff. Now this is what the scene looked like Wednesday night. No patient was on board at the time, but the pilot did suffer minor injuries. Two other crew members were not hurt, nor was anyone in the hospital. The National Transportation Safety Board has the wreckage and is investigating the cause. The helicopter spun around several times before crash landing. Until the roof is completely repaired, UNM Hospital is using Presbyterian's helipad. Water samples from reservoirs near the waste isolation pilot plant near Carlsbad show no signs of contamination after a radiation leak at the plant. Here's the latest from WIPS leaders. They say independent researchers tested the samples and found no trace of radioactive particles. And they say samples that had tested positive are now back to normal. These results confirm what the plant's own monitoring program found. More than 100 firefighters and hotshot crews are now battling the Benson wildfire south of Alamogordo. So far, it's burned about 100 acres, is just 20% contained, and investigators think people caused it. This is mostly on national and state forest land. The Sunspot Observatory is just a few miles away. And then there is the Georgetown Fire, 20 miles northeast of Silver City. Grant County and U.S. Forest Service crews are fighting this one. They think people caused it as well. It's burned four acres so far, and we know an air tanker is used to help keep it from spreading. And now to get all of your windy weather updates and alerts, make sure you go to KRQE.com. Federal managers, land managers rather, want people to weigh in on plans for a huge transmission line proposed to stretch from New Mexico to southern Arizona. Developers say the South Line transmission project would improve the electrical grid and help distribute solar and wind power. The Bureau of Land Management has put out a draft report about the possible environmental impacts. The line would cross public and private property. The comment period ends in July and several public meetings.